Seventh-day Adventist. I'll have to be very quick so I can answer as many questions <laughs> as we can with the Lord's grace. Okay. The story begins with somebody um, called William Miller. He was a Baptist preacher, born in 1782, died in 1849 by the name of William Miller. He started this movement and out of this movement, the Seventh-day Adventist eventually was actually formed. What had happened? Uh, Mr. William Miller um, prophesied according to his way of thinking and belief that the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ will take place in 1844. 1844, Jesus Christ will come. Well, 1844 came, uh, neither Mr. Miller nor his followers saw any return of Jesus Christ. Consequently, the followers of William Miller started scattering and going to each to their own ways because they realized he is telling lies. So they scattered. Um, however, what happened, um, someone came by the name of Hiram Edson. Hiram Edson said or claimed that he saw a vision. Uh, he saw the vision of Jesus Christ standing at the altar saying to Hiram Edson, well, William Miller was right as far as the time was concerned, but he was wrong as far as the place was concerned. I did come back in 1844, but not to earth, to another place in heaven. Yeah. Um, let's say a few things. That's where, where the Lord Jesus in 1844 came out of the holy place and went into the holy of holies. This took place in 1844, and that's where they come up with this concept of investigative judgment. It's an investigative judgment. What is an investigative judgment? Meaning, ever since the Lord Jesus ascended and sat at the right hand of the Father, until 1844, those who believed in Him, He put their names in the book of life. But in, 1880, in 1844, what happened? The Lord Jesus changed his, his place in heaven. So from one place to another place. So when he went to the Holy of Holies, what he did since 1844 till this day, what is he doing? All those people whose names are written in his book since his ascension till 1844 and after 1844 till now, he is now going to investigate if they are worthy to be with him in heaven at the end or see you later. Um, what do SDA believe about divine authority? SDA means seven days Adventists. The extremist group in them, they say it is the Bible only. The, the moderate group, they say it's Bible only. Sola Scriptura. It's like they are Protestant in a way. And they actually claim, the Seventh-day Adventist church now, they claim they are part of the Pro Protestantism branch. So they believe, uh, the moderate group in them, they believe in the Sola Scriptura. However, the extremist group in them, they believe in the Bible only as it is interpreted and understood by one of the pioneer founders of Seventh-day Adventist Church by the name of Ellen G. White, the prophetess of Seventh-day Adventist. And I am really sorry to say this, but she is an absolute... There's something wrong in her head. I'll be nice, right? So there is something wrong with her head and she has been lying through her teeth throughout her so-called visions and prophecies. But she is highly regarded till this day by the seven days Adventist as one of the founders of their so-called church. But their belief is cultic. 
is of a cultic nature. So, so they say, the extremists, they say, yeah, we believe in the Bible only. However, according to, um, to Ellen G. White, our prophetess, according to her. So whatever Ellen G. White in, uh, writes about the Holy Bible, interprets it, and the way she understands it, this is the way they will take the Holy Bible. Not any other way. Outside of Ellen G. White, it's a no-no. Some will place Ellen G. White, they will place her on par with the writings of the Apostle Paul. Wow, not bad. They believe in the on, ongoing gift of prophecy, Ellen G. White prophecy. One of her prophecies, guess what? She's saying, you need, you need to be obedient to the Sabbath. That's why they are called Seven-day Adventists. So they worshipped Jesus, uh, God in a way on a Saturday instead of a Sunday. So Ellen G. White prophesied, if you do not worship God on a Saturday and you do as so other people do on Sunday, those who worship God on Sunday, they are alluded to the mark of the beast. So if you are worshipping God on a Sunday, you've got the mark of the beast, you go into hell. So all Christians who worship Jesus Christ and celebrate the Holy Mass on Sunday, according to Ellen G. White, the genius, they are going to go to hell. They've got the mark of the beast. I wish I had a glimpse of Ellen G. White for a moment. Um, Colossians 2, 16 to 17. Look what St. Paul is saying. Colossians 2, 16 to 17. So let no one, so let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival uh, or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one judge you. Let no one come and say, hey, unless you worship Jesus Christ on a Sabbath, you go into hell. He's, Saint Paul says, let no one judge you and dares to judge you according to colossians 2 16 to 17. ellen g white lied through her teeth to those poor followers um well when william miller uh said that jesus christ is coming back in 1844 since he didn't come back they called it the great disappointment he came back and said, look, I'm really disappointed, guys. My dear followers, I'm very disappointed that Jesus didn't show up in 1844. So it's up to you if you want to stay with me or find some other liar like William Miller. Oh, my goodness. Oh, by the way, Ellen G. White also prophesied... <laughs> that the Lord Jesus second coming or return will be while she was while she's alive guess what Ellen G white was born in 1827 died in 1915 she died in 1915 Jesus hasn't come back yet so another false prophet when someone claims to be a prophet or a prophetess if one glitch, one of the letters, one of the words that is absolutely incorrect, then everything else they've said is wiped off the record. You cannot pick and choose. You can't say, oh, she said some nice things here, let's pick him. And she said some really ugly and bad things here. Okay, we'll ignore him. No, it's either all or absolutely nothing. Because the moment you say Jesus talks to me, then Jesus can't lie, Jesus can't falsify things, so it is either all is true or nothing is true. So if you give me 99.999% of absolute truthfulness in your prophet prophecy, you give me 0 0.0001 of false prophecy, then to me, according to the word of God, you are a false prophet. It's either 100% or nothing because when it comes to Jesus Christ 
there is no place for error at all Jesus is God he is perfect in everything he says and everything he does so my advice to you my dear friend do not go to seven-day Adventist you need to go to an apostolic church and I'm saying it believe you me I'm saying it out of love and respect nothing else I'm not here to judge I'm not here to point a finger at no one I'm here just to shed some light on what the Lord Jesus has been teaching and giving all of us if you do not receive the body and the blood of the Lamb of God you have no life in you this is Christ teaching he who takes my body eats my body and drinks my blood has life in him but he who does not has no life in him and the wrath of God is upon that person you need to go to an apostolic church where they celebrate the holy mass and they give the body and the blood in the truth not symbolic in the truth my beloved in the truth anyway that was uh, about seven days at dentist so there we go uh, Ellen G white she lied William Miller lied and uh, the other guy Hiram Edson also lied about his vision he claimed that he saw Jesus. Where are the witnesses? When the Lord Jesus came, had, he had 12 eyewitnesses and 70 thereafter. And church fathers for 2,000 years all spoke the same thing about the Lord Jesus. That's a credible account. Not someone says, I saw Jesus. Well, you said that, I don't know. He could be very well lying which he was anyway so yeah seven day and by the way it started in the 18th century seven day Adventist so it's only recent anything recent please walk away from you need yeah that's right if it's if it's new it's not true anything recent please walk away from it you need to look at a church that has been going the same way for over 2,000 years how can you deny such a record, such a history, such a, an authentic record of 2,000 years and go and believe in someone coming yesterday and telling you this is what Jesus is saying? Impossible. You need to stick to the church that has been there from day one. Till now the same hasn't changed. Till now the same. So, come to an apostolic church, my beloved. Receive the body and the blood. Believe in the saints. Believe in the Holy Mother. And when I say believe, I mean venerate them, respect them, remember them in your prayers. But Jesus Christ is and will always be the only way to salvation and redemption. He is the only one who is God and no one else. God revealed in the flesh. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can save you except Him. However, Christ is not alone. He has a family and definitely has a magnificent mother called Mary. And if you deny your mom, you break in one of the Ten Commandments. Respect your father and mother. If Jesus disrespects Mary, He is breaking one of the Ten Commandments which God gave Moses to Moses. He cannot and He will not because He adores His mom. And why not? She is amazing. But Jesus is the only one who can save. It is Jesus who crushed the head of the serpent, not Mary, not anyone else. Please. When it comes to the Lord, we need to be sharp like a sword. There's no two ways about it. When it comes to salvation and redemption, no one, no one shares this with Christ. It is He and he, he alone that saves and redeems. Not the Holy Mother, not any saint, no one, no. I can assure you, I'm nothing. But if, far from our Holy Mother, but if she comes and shows up here, well, I wish, I pray. If she comes out and shows up here, she will tell you, my son is the only way. I will help you to get you to my son. But 
That's my role is to get you to my son because he is the only one that saves and delivers. Anyway, we need to move on. So forget about seven day Adventists. You need to go to an apostolic church. Okay. I love you. Be strong. Be strong.